Hello everyone, welcome to Wildwood Studio. I'm Sarah and in this video I'm going to be finishing all of the burnings that I've made in the last little while. So I'll be taking you through which finish I use and why and also how I apply it to all of my burnings. I usually like to wait and do a whole bunch at once because the finish is better and has less floaties and dried out bits if I open and use it less often and I find I usually ruin my brushes even when I wash them. If you like this sort of content, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video, and if you have a question or an idea for a new video you'd like to see, then please leave a comment down below. So for all of my burnings, or at least all of the ones without color, I'm going to be using this Verathane Diamond Wood Finish. It's important that the surface you're going to be finishing is clean, so I've made sure that there's no dust or anything on them, and then I just started to brush it onto all of my burnings. Before I talk more about how I finish these, I just want to say that it's not totally necessary for you to put any kind of finish on your art at all. I've seen a lot of people argue that it's actually better not to, because you can go back and touch it up and fix things whenever you want. Which is something you cannot do once they've been coated in a wood finish, because it would be really toxic to burn that. I choose to clear coat all of mine, however, because it adds protection against damage and also against sunlight. I've chosen the satin finish for this, though they also have matte and gloss and semi-gloss versions. I prefer the satin just because I don't like my burnings to be all that shiny. I've also decided to use the outdoor finish. They have an indoor one, which you would think might be the better choice for an artwork since it's not going to be outside, but wood burning is kind of especially susceptible to sun damage and will often fade over time, especially if it's left in direct sunlight. This means that it's always really important not to display any pyrography in direct sunlight, but failing that, I also want my burnings to have a little extra protection. And the outdoor finish claims to protect against sun damage, which the indoor one does not. The reason I've chosen Verathane specifically, and I've been using it to coat my burnings for quite a long time, is that it goes on and dries completely clear. So when you brush it on, it looks a little milky, but it'll dry totally clear, and it doesn't change the look of the wood at all. For example, you can see in these burnings, which are some older ones that I finished with a different brand, that it had the effect of darkening the wood and also making the grain more visible, which covered over some of the lighter shading that I had done, and changed the overall look of the piece by making the wood grain a lot more prominent and visible in the burning. I also found it yellowed a bit over time, which is not a problem that I've had with the Verathane one. I think part of the reason that this works so well is that it's water-based, whereas the other ones I've tried have all been oil-based. I'm not an expert, so don't quote me on that, but I think there might be something to it. It's also nice that it's water-based for another reason, and that is cleanup. You don't need any harsh solvents to clean this out of your brushes, just soap and water. I know that I said I tend to ruin my brushes, but honestly, it is really nice and easy just to be able to wash them between coats with clear water and not have to worry about them hardening up in between coats of finish. But I do still usually prefer to use a new brush, and not one that I've used before once it's had months to dry out. Because I always find that a new brush will do a much better job, I don't know, I find the finish just always ends up clumping up the brush a little bit, even if you get most of it out. And since I just use house painting brushes that I get from the dollar store, I'm not too worried about it. Like, I try and clean them, but I'm also not too worried if I don't totally succeed. I guess this is a little wasteful, but like I said, I generally wait until I'm going to do a show or I've sold one of my burnings and then I just clear coat them all at once. So I really only ruin like one or two brushes a year. And sometimes I do manage to get it all out and I can reuse them, so that's really good too. So I did about four coats on each of these because that is what was recommended on the label, and I tried to keep them all as even as possible. This is a thing that builds up, so you don't need to put a ton on all at once. So these are all of my burnings without color, and now onto the ones with color. For these, because I've used a lot of watercolor and watercolor pencils, it's really important not to brush on the finish. This is because watercolors can be reactivated with water and you will smear the color all over your burning. If you want to try it out and do a test for yourself, you can do a little test with some burning and whatever you've used to color it on a spare bit of wood and apply your finish to that. This will show you if it's going to make the colors run. So, so that you can see, I've tested it out on this burning, which I really wasn't happy with how these flowers turned out anyway and I wasn't planning to keep it, so this is what's going to happen if you try and brush on a brushable finish over top of watercolor. So because of this issue, I'm using an aerosol version of the same finish to do all of my wood burnings with color. This made it really easy not to smear my colors. It's the first time I've used this finish and it worked out really well. One thing that I noticed when I first sprayed it on, and honestly it gave me a bit of a mild panic attack because it looked really bumpy. Hopefully you can see what I mean here. And I didn't do the thing that I just said you should do, which is test it on something else first. But luckily after I laid it flat and waited a couple of minutes, it really smoothed out and the finish turned out really nice. Once again, I did four or five thin coats on all of them until I had a coverage that looked really good and even. One thing that's important to say with this is that you want proper ventilation, and you should definitely be wearing the correct safety equipment for this. The brush-on version doesn't really smell that much, so I feel comfortable doing it in my house with the windows open, but the aerosol version puts the finish into the air, which makes it much, much more likely that you're going to breathe it in. 
Because of this, I clear coated all of my colored wood burnings on my lunch break in the spray booth at my work and I wore my respirator to keep from breathing in the fumes. I know that a full spray booth is not something that everyone has at their disposal, but you can always just do it outside. I live in a basement apartment though, so I didn't think my landlords would really want me spray painting things in their driveway. The last burning I'm clear coating in this video is the sign that I made for my grandparents for Christmas. And this one's a little different because it's going to be displayed outside. So with most of my burnings, I don't bother to coat the back because it's really the front that matters, that's where the art is. But with this one, it's much more important to protect it from the weather. So I had to coat both sides and not just the front. Because I was a little bit worried about it, I even put a couple extra coats of finish on this just for good measure. And now I guess we'll see how it does outside in the sun since I've never had a wood burning be displayed outside before. Hopefully you recognize most, if not all, of the burnings in this video. If not, and you're new to my channel, welcome. All of the burnings I've showed you here have their own videos that show my process of making them if you're interested in watching those. I hope you found this helpful. I know that I had to go through a lot of trial and error when I first started out, so I hope this will keep you from having to do the same. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram for more up-to-date posts about upcoming projects. Also, please make sure to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all my future art videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.